Hey, I'm Sam and I do design and in the video today, I've got a competition in collaboration with Nordgreen. So here is how the competition is going to work. You guys can go onto the Nordgreen website, you can find your favorite watch and they are all designed by ex Bang & Olufsen speaker designer, Jacob Wagner. Once you've got your favorite watch, we want you to model that in your modeling software of choice. Once you have your watch modeled, then we want you to go and render that watch in a scene of your choice. For example, I used a flat lay for today's episode, but you guys can do an exploded view or you can do a floating watch in a studio or a watch on a wrist as well. That'd be really cool to see. And once you have your render, we want you to upload them to Instagram. When you upload them to Instagram, you're going to tag Nordgreen Official, and you're going to tag me, Sam Does Design, and you're going to use the hashtag Nordgreen Does Design, which I hope they're happy with as a hashtag because I've just made it up and haven't told them yet. But that is how I'm going to see the renders that you guys submit. You have one week from the video being released today to submit your renders. And in one week's time, I will go through and pick my favorites. And the winner is going to get a Nordgreen watch of their choice. Second place is going to get £80 off a watch of their choice and third place is going to get £60 off a watch of their choice. Once you receive your Nordgreen watch, you can become part of the Giving Back program, which lets you choose a charity of your choice from the Nordgreen website and it gives money to great causes across the world and it is really a great way of giving back to those in need. So I've got a great tutorial for Keyshot for you today, so we are going to hop straight into it. I'm going to focus on the lighting technique that I've used and I can't wait to see your submissions over on Instagram. Okay guys, so I hear you. I posted my entry into the competition on Instagram yesterday and I got the impression that people don't have time during the week to model a watch. Um, so what I've done is I've gone and put the Philosopher watch that I made on my website so you can go and download that. And that also includes the logo as well. So if you want to get the Nordgreen logo and you want to get the Philosopher watch, you can go and download the step file, but it is just the surface data. Please don't look inside the watch because it is so ugly in there because I didn't really look into that. Uh, but you can go and do that. I would like to still see some different models online as well, but if you're pressed for time this week, you can go and download it from my website. So the main thing that we're going to start with is turning this plain back plate into a texture with a rippled surface. I got some questions about that on Instagram as well when I posted. And we're going to do that with a displacement map. Now, a lot of the textures that I use are downloaded from Polygon, um, which is a paid service. They're nothing to do with this channel, but I just like to use their textures because they're really easy to use. So this is actually a brush that they have available to download for programs like ZBrush and things like that. But I also use them as displacement maps, as PNGs as well. So what I've done here is I've put a displacement map node into the standard Keyshot cloth material. Nothing has been changed in this Keyshot cloth material apart from the displacement map. And then now what I can do is go in to find where I've saved the polygon file and put it in there into that node. And what I'm going to do after I've adjusted the cameras is I can place where that PNG is on the plane surface that you can see there. And by hitting C on the keyboard, I can see just that uh, PNG and then I can start to position it by changing the dots per inch and then also by moving it with the arrows here as well. And what's going to happen with a displacement map is anything that's white will get raised and anything that's black will stay where it is. Although what you'll see me do in a minute is changing the offset. So the blacks move down a little bit and the whites move up a little bit. And that's just because the watches are already sat on that plane. You've just seen me doing it there. And if everything moves up, uh, then it'll start to intersect with the watches. So I just changed that a little bit there. I changed the height to two millimeters because we don't want it to be too bumpy. And also I changed the sizes of the triangles because we want it to be quite high quality because we're zooming in really close and getting a macro shot of the watches as well. So I did it at 0.01 millimeters. You can go even finer if you want as well. Uh, but that sort of, it gave a good look for me without making too many triangles so that Keyshot didn't freak out about all the triangles that we had. So as you can see now that I've pressed execute that uh, we have some ripples in the cloth and that's how easy it is to make this sort of rippled effect. It doesn't need to be modeled 
uh, doesn't need to be any input from me, it's all Polygon and it's all Keyshot doing the work for me. And then once I get the cameras set back up again, uh, you can see the ripples in the background. And it's nothing to distract from the watches. I didn't want this to be overpoweringly uh, creased or rippled or anything like that. I just wanted it to break up that back surface and it makes it not perfect, which means that it looks more realistic because nothing in real life is perfect. The next thing that I want to show you guys is how I added in the window effect with the leaves. I did that by inserting a plane and then turning it to a spotlight material. Now the spotlight material lets you add another PNG and anything that's white is going to be the light turned on and anything that's black is going to block out the light completely. So I've got this PNG here that I made using um, some squares in Illustrator and everything else in the image is black. So I just load that into the texture uh, for the spotlight. And you can see that I've got some blur on the leaves, which means that it looks slightly further away than the window pane itself, which is trying to mimic real life. Now that we've got this set up in the spotlight material, I can go through and change some of the settings. And I want to make sure that the whole square is visible within the spotlight itself and I changed the power to lumens instead because that is more realistic for what it is in real life. And the other thing that I want to change is the beam angle because when sunlight comes through a window, it's been traveling for millions of miles already. So it's not going to have a wide arc and a wide angle as it's coming through the window. So you want to make that as small as possible. Um, so I made it really small and then that would mean that I need to move the light really far away which is again going to simulate the real world and in the geometry view here that means I can set up my camera and then just move all of the geometry around without having to move the camera and what I've done as well is I have selected the spotlight now I've also changed the pivot point so that I can move it around the scene and the light is always going to stay in the same place and I just move it really far away so we get uh, quite a large image again and then I'm just tweaking it by this point, adding more lumens, moving it further away uh, and then I think I might speed up this next section because a lot of this is just moving the light around, rotating the PNG so it's the right orientation uh, and just getting the shadows to look right. So it's a lot of back and forth with how far away it is, what the lumen should be, um, and just really tweaking it until I get the right image in our live preview there as well. So I finally made it brighter so that we can actually see what we're doing. And I'm just moving it now a little bit more so we can get the a similar look to the post that I already posted on Instagram. And I quite like the fact that one of the window bars was parallel with the watches, so I'm just changing that out now. And then finally, I can move it into position. And then what I'm going to do is also add in a radius, which gives it a little bit of a Gaussian blur. If you give it too much, it looks terrible. So just one or two millimeters, maybe maximum four for this setup, but every setup is gonna be different. And then what I should also do here is add in a more natural light on the Kelvin scale. That's gonna give it a nice daylight glow or it's almost like a sunrise or sunset type of look when it's a yellow light like this. And then what I should also note is I've gone into the environment tab and I've actually changed the background color to have more of a blue tint to it because that's going to complement the yellow that we've just put into the scene. And you can do that by selecting the environment that you want to work on unlock it, which I already had it locked, make sure you have the background selected and then you can move down and go and change the color of the background. And that's going to change the overall color of the scene. And in this case, it's gonna change the color of the shadows because we've already got that yellow light casting a light uh, on the rest of the scene. And it just needs to be something just uh, to complement the light that we've already got in there. And between those three elements, apart from the materials uh, applied to the watch, which aren't crazy different materials, they're just standard key shot ones, that's pretty much what makes the render. You're always trying to replicate real life and you're always trying to just make your scene slightly imperfect, uh, which is gonna make it look more realistic, which is exactly what I did with the ripple effect in the linen there. 
So there it is guys, that's my submission for the Nord Green competition. Don't forget you can win a watch of your very own if you submit one of your renders onto Instagram. As always guys, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and hit the bell button. And I can't wait to see your submissions for the competition and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.